Hello everyone, how are you? I'm Mari Ferger and today I'm going to talk a bit about the pagan traditions in Salzburg since I'm visiting this part of Austria. This video will somewhat serve to criticize our modern world and how, socially speaking, our behavior is destroying our cultural heritage. This is not a, a critique specifically towards Austria or the people of Salzburg, but serves as a good example of what is happening all around the world, especially in Europe. You will understand what I'm talking about further ahead. I do hope you enjoy this video. I came to Austria for a walk to stretch my legs. I've been to Vienna and now to Salzburg and I had a very good time in between. Austria is a wonderful country and everything is so clean, so wonderfully put together, everyone so cordial and visually it's all so appealing um, that this, per this perfection is a little bit unnerving, I must confess, maybe because I'm used to countries who are quite messy. But rapidly I felt like home and there is a homely feeling. From the outside, I have always seen Austria as a country very much concerned with its cultural heritage and its traditions. And now that I have come to visit uh, the country in 2019, uh, it isn't far from that perspective, but I already noticed a slight tendency to disregard the past. An all too common mistake by many European countries uh, towards their historical past and heritage uh, and a defect among our European governments uh, spreading quite rapidly. Austria and particularly here in Salzburg, not only in the city but the entire region, fortunately many folk traditions are still very much alive and festivities throughout the year uh, maintain the spirit of the past awake and people have the chance to revive at a certain extent uh, the ways and celebrations of the past. For instance, in the region of Salzburg there is the mid-winter procession, a 12th night march in honor of the goddess Pertha. Uh, as you know, the Germanic goddess of nature, of the Alpine paganism in the upper German and Austrian regions of the Alps. One of the oldest Austrian traditions with actual little vestiges of Christianization. I mean, <laughs> this pagan celebration remained quite pagan to the point that during the 18th century people who celebrated this uh, were expected to do penance for their sin of celebrating this heathen practice. And if anyone died during the festivity, and obviously while participating in it, the church would refuse burial in sanctified ground. Well, clearly the church did not approve of this, mm. but it survived anyway, and people kept celebrating it. And to this day, it's still here, very pagan in its essence. The celebration is held during January. During February, there is the celebration uh, called Cracking in the Spring, Eperschnasen, uh, chasing away demons and evil spirits with banging and clattering, well, quite a bit of noise. Uh, this is a very old practice and we find in the archaeological record of prehistoric contexts pottery in general for domestic cooking, all purposely broken in celebration precisely to make loud noises during such celebrations. This remotes to a prehistoric past when humanity had little defense against wild animals and so loud noises and a great deafening record, uh, racket <laughs> were one of the best ways to scare away wild animals. So this obviously gained religious connotations to word of evil spirits and so on. I'm not sure if in other countries uh, this is done, uh, but in mine 
this is also a tradition to bang on pots and pans and lids to make a great noise to ward off evil spirits and to welcome the new year, for instance. Although in Austria and well, particularly in the region of Salzburg, people walk across the fields whirling or spinning rope lashes, making sharp noises. The sound of the whips, it's not only to chase away evil spirits, but also to open up the earth, to crack open the ice from last winter, so that the god of spring can come out of its icy prison. Farmers used to do this as well, when the time of harvest began, this ritual ceremony with whips, uh, so that the ice would crack and the fields would open to be cultivated. This is still a custom uh, in the region of Salzburg. Of course, there is the Maypole at the 1st of May, Maybom. This is perhaps by far the pagan celebration that has been forbidden the most. <laughs> Quite often throughout history since well, Christianity has been around uh, Europe. But still, it remains alive and it's still a tradition all across Europe and of course here in Salzburg. The planting of maypoles has been prohibited again and again since Charlemagne all the way to the 18th century, but it's still here, it survived. May Day Eve is Walpurgis Night, when witches are supposed to ride. In Salzburg, this night ride of the witches is called Unquiet Night. According to tradition, all the trade signs and door plates in the village of Salzburg have to be changed and placed on different establishments or other public buildings. For instance, uh, the trade sign of a shoe shop is placed outside a shop that sells solely food or the sign of a butcher shop is placed outside the office of a lawyer. Things of the sort. Anyway, uh, the maypole has to be cut and according to tradition it should not be cut in the woods near each village. But each village must cut and steal the, the wood from their neighboring village. If news get around, of course, the village whose tree was stolen is in the right to get it back. And so trees were stolen and rescued many times in one single night. But wherever the maypole stands at sunrise, there must be allowed to stay. I think it's a very beautiful and funny tradition that is, well, unfortunately, slowly, slowly dying out these days. Three wreaths were, uh, are placed in the maypole. The largest is the lowest and the smallest is the highest on, on the maypole. I hope I'm making sense. Uh, decorated wreaths with ribbons and flowers and prizes on them for those skilled enough to climb and, and claim the prizes. This tradition is still alive in Austria, particularly in the region of Salzburg. So, just like in many countries, Austria and particularly the region of Salzburg still have beautiful pagan traditions and of course other traditions which are either Christian or Christianized pagan traditions. Well, the point is, there are many beautiful historical traditions which invokes our ancestral past and it's important for the identity of a people. It's important to maintain these traditions alive. It's not just part of our cultural heritage, but also part of our very spirit and the spirits of our ancestors and their memory remains alive through these celebrations. By the continuation of these traditions we maintain the memory of the past alive. I find it curious but worrisome that throughout history there has been several attempts to put an end to these pagan traditions 
and celebrations, but all the same they remained alive. But it's precisely nowadays, in this 21st century, in this maddening, rapidly changing society, that we are very close to destroying our cultural heritage in a couple of years. Several centuries of trying to end pagan traditions, and now in the 21st century we can destroy them in a matter of years due to our modern mentality and certain ways of thinking that can and will eventually destroy our past. Let me explain. These pagan traditions throughout history may have changed their names and forms of celebration, but in their essence they remain pretty much the same. When Christianity started to settle in all across Europe, the approach the church had towards pagan beliefs was practically the same approach the Romans had had when in contact with other people's cultures across the empire. The church understood the importance of maintaining the pagan traditions alive in order to easily convert to pagans. The conversion was easier if churches were built on the old sacrifice grounds and allowed the people to continue to celebrate their old traditions and holidays and even erect their temporary temples for the various celebrations uh, at the church itself. It wasn't just the Christianization of pagan celebrations and festivities and incorporating them into the new religious panorama, but it was also allowing many celebrations to continue normally, at a certain extent, of course. Then, Charlemagne happened. <laughs> His approach to paganism was the opposite of the church. He forbade heathen practices and celebrations. There were at least 30 uh, forbidden heathen rites. His objective was to root out any form of paganism. So, we have two approaches. Merging paganisms into Christianity and or rooting them out with fire and sword, destruction and death. Even so, paganisms remained. They have survived centuries of oppression and violence and fear. People kept doing it despite it all. And we nowadays should at the very least honor our ancestors by keeping these traditions alive. Honor our ancestors for all their sacrifice and for the thousands of generations that suffered greatly just to keep the old gods alive. But things have changed rapidly in the 21st century. Well, in fact things have changed since industrialization and the growing consumerism. This social and economic order that pushes us to the acquisition of goods and services in great amounts perpetually growing to the point that it feels like a drug of this modern society. We now stand on an era of pure consumerism, of acquiring something, using it and throw it away. Constantly using something and throw it away. This hunger to satiate our whims, to satiate our uncontrollable impulse to have, to obtain, to acquire something because everybody else has it and so we must have it too. So we won't stay behind and so we must, must chase this need to always consume and throw it away. It's sickening. This era of consumerism is affecting our minds because everything comes so easily to us. We can have it, use it, consume it throw away and get some more. Everything is so easily disposable that we take that very perception of things to virtually everything in our lives. There is no time to waste and so we acquire and consume and throw it away in the garbage. Acquire and consume and throw it in the garbage. 
it's a cycle of wastefulness. Everything is so easily acquired right there in the moment that we lose our patience and when something isn't there at our disposal, the, the very moment we want it, there is no time for friendships, there is no time for love. We buy, we sell, we exchange, everything comes to us and goes away so fast and we just get more of it. And this is creating a society that doesn't care about anything because this is a society of wastefulness and always ready to consume and throw away. We are losing the ability to give value to things. Everything is acquired so easily and disregard so easily that we are losing the capacity to give value to virtually everything around us. And that shows on our cultural heritage. There are so many other forms of entertainment that fulfill our wishes and needs instantly and when we get tired of it, we throw it away because we know if we, well, if we ever want it again, we can get it easily and consume it and throw it away again. Let me give you an example with music itself. Here in Salzburg is the homeland of Mozart. Certainly, uh, you can visit his house and, and there are souvenirs you can get. But on the streets, everyone with a musical instrument plays Despacito. I mean, uh, this is the homeland of Mozart and <laughs> people play Despacito. Mind that I have nothing against Despacito. What I'm against is this society of consumerism. Despacito was a trend. It was everywhere. No one would uh, shut up about it, uh, even if it was a good song and people rapidly get tired of it because it was constantly playing everywhere. You consume it until you don't want it anymore and then throw it away. This is our modern mind of pure consumerism. We do this with music and with everything else. We consume everything until we get absolutely tired of it and throw it away. We can't seem to have another approach to life itself. Despacito was a trend, everyone wanted to follow that trend, everybody was listening, consuming, um, constantly repeating, no one wanted to be left behind and must follow this trend because what everyone was consuming, well, we must all consume it, consume it as well. And then poof, another trend appears, we throw the previous one away and consume the new trend until we drain every last drop of it. And then we must rapidly find another source another trend to rapidly consume and satiate our hunger for consumption. We are not giving proper value to things that are priceless, such as love, friendship, traditions, real happiness given by the simple and natural things of the world. And we wrongly place value on all the deceptions that gives us the illusion of satisfying our uncontrollable hunger. It's a never-ending cycle of consumption, like drinking water, but it turns into ash in our lips and we continue to be thirsty and so we continue to try to consume more water. But no matter what, the water will continue to turn into ash in our lips and continues to make us feel thirsty for more of the same. Salzburg is indeed a region that strives to keep the old traditions alive, but it's already suffering from this social and economic phenomenon that is killing the old traditions. For instance, tourism is a wonderful thing, it brings people close together and there is the opportunity to 
know about new cultures and share ideas and acquire new knowledge. But tourism, at the same time, in this materialistic society of consumerism, is completely disfiguring the entire scenery. What attracts people to the countries is, uh, is being altered to meet the needs of the consumers. What attracted people in the first place is being altered to create more tourists and therefore more consumerism. Old buildings, local markets, traditional motifs, cultural heritage in general, the very landscape itself is being altered to harbor various establishments and tourist areas and gift shops to meet the consuming habits of tourists. What attracted people uh, into, visit, uh, into visiting countries is being altered precisely because of the growing uh, tourists. Uh, it's, it's a paradox. But the fault isn't with tourists. The fault is in the modern phenomenon of our society. This society of consumerism. People want what's easy, what can be acquired right there in that very moment and consume it and throw it away. No proper value is given to anything anymore because everything is disposable. So Salzburg right now is at the risk of losing its traditions because nobody cares for these things anymore. People only want what can rapidly satisfy their hunger for consumption. Many countries suffer from the same and many countries already lost much of their native traditions and motifs. It's the disfigurement of the very spirit of a nation. Salzburg is, uh, still has a lot of beautiful old traditions that survived so much throughout the centuries, but it's at the risk of losing it all in an instant because of this society of consumerism. I honestly think we need to rapidly change our habits and slow down. We need to be more concerned with our cultural heritage and less with whatever new trend is out there being forcibly imposed and pushed down our throats because we must follow it blindly and consume it until another pill of delusion puts us to sleep and away from reality. Or rather, it places us in a dream state of false entertainment while the world crumbles into, in, into pieces and we forget who we were. I think we should take care of our cultural heritage and try as much as we can to keep the traditions alive. It's healthy for us and it's a great way to honor our ancestors all their effort and sacrifices to gift us with the traditions of the past. It's our duty to keep the old fires burning. Now, don't take this too literally. I'm not asking you to go out there and burn things. It's metaphorically speaking. But do try your best to keep the old traditions running. And both the ancestors and the gods will still be alive as long as there is one single person that keeps the old traditions running and the pagan spirit awaken. All right, my dear friends, I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you want to watch behind the scenes <laughs> of my vacations, you can follow me on my various social media. I will put the links down below in the description or at the end of this video. And if you want to help this little community growing, you can always become my patron. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video. And as always, a pretty